Greetings, citizens. It's another episode of Quality Time with Clive. We're taking a look at Crystal Synthesizer, and uh, we've already gone over selecting oscillators using the amplitude envelope, talking about the filter and the filter envelope, and also on the modulation page. We've also talked about using LFOs and mod envelopes and targeting various elements in the synthesizer. So in this episode, I thought we would just focus in on creating leads and bass synthesizers. So I have here a very simple sine wave pattern. And let's just begin with bass ideas. What we want to do is hear that sine wave all the way down. And obviously we can increase the volume of that. And also with our amplitude envelope, we can also control whether we want to have any kind of, you know, release or not. All right, so now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and copy voice one. I'm gonna paste it to voice two. Uh, this is gonna be exactly the same thing. So two sine waves playing on top of each other, basically twice as loud, but has no characteristic other than the sine wave. So let's take the oscillator and voice two and change it to something a little bit more buzzy, uh, saw square. And we can actually move this one guy up the octave so we have the sine wave down below and then the saw square. And then maybe pull down the volume of the sine wave. So there we have a nice little base of the size that we can use. And we can also use the filter now on voice two. Let's turn them on to uh, the X res low pass. That's pretty cool. And let's turn on the envelope. And uh, I like to keep things simple at first. Flat four is fine for me. Let's actually have that let's have that sound grow grow into it. Move down the scale so we can see what we're doing here. That's pretty cool, but because the filter envelope has that long slope in the very beginning, it takes a while for it to grow into it. So we just want to pull it more over to the left, so less time until that until that guy actually opens up. Playing around with the pulse width, uh, the pulse mix. The pulse mix is interesting because what we have is we have the way that crystal is organized, we have a saw wave on the left. So if this pulse mix slider is all the way over to the left, we just select a saw wave. And if it's all the way over to the right, we get a square wave. And so in between, it's kind of a hybrid of them. That's pretty cool. Let's copy voice one, sorry, voice two, copy voice two, move it to voice three. And then for voice three, maybe what I want to do is maybe move this guy up the octave, pull that volume back a little bit. We don't need to have that upper octave so present. So this is a pretty good sound, except you'll notice that something that you'd use for low subdued sustained sounds. You can't really play very fast ideas simply because the filter envelope is set up for a slow uh, gate opening there. All right, so we're back to a simple sine wave. And now let's talk about perhaps doing uh, something like a lead sound. Let's go to voice one and change the sine to a triangle. Turn up our main volume. It's a uh, copy voice one, paste the voice two. Now again, the same 
theory again, it's just gonna be twice as loud. We could do something like take voice two and move it up the octave so we have low octave, high octave. If you fine tune one of the oscillators against the other, just a few hertz either above or below the original, you're gonna get a shimmering effect. Uh, it adds a chorus and just adds a vibrancy and a liveliness to the sound, which makes it so much more interesting in your music. waves. So what I have here is a saw square on the second voice and a warm saw on the first voice. And then we could do the same thing, it would make them both warm saw. I think I like the blending of the two different sounds. So leave this guy warm saw, voice two, maybe saw square. By keeping bass and lead sounds monophonic, it just gives you a much more punchy sound. And that's basically what you're looking for. If you're going to create other sounds that involve harmonies, then obviously that's when you'd use the polyphonic feature. So that's it for now, and there'll be more Crystal tutorials coming along. I hope that you're finding this little series useful, and again, it's not that the Crystal is the best synthesizer out there. It's not that I'm the best programmer out there. But what's important is knowing how synthesizers work so that when you hear sounds, you know how to achieve the results that you're after. And I personally, what I love is I love hearing sounds that people have created individually rather than using factory presets. So. So there you have it. Thank you very much. So long, farewell. Auf Wiedersehen, adieu. And uh, see you soon.